Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of this series on Django Q. Uh, in the previous episodes we saw roughly uh, what is Django Q and what problem uh, it is going to solve. Uh, worth doing a quick recap of what we covered so far. Uh, we created a Django project, uh, we created a Django application, we installed uh, Django Q and Redis client, uh, uh, I created a project on uh, Heroku and a Redis instance. Um, finally, we configured Django Q here in the base file of this settings um, folder with the Redis credential that I've got from this uh, command Heroku config. Uh, just a note, if you want to get just uh, this Redis URL, you can run Heroku config get Redis URL. Now, for production, but even for development, I recommend moving uh, this credential in the env file. And it's exactly what I'm going to do now. Uh, this can become uh, env str redis host. And here you can provide a uh, default value, so it won't error out if the environment variable is not set. Uh, and you can set the variables in this dot and file. For Redis URL we're good. Let's move this one too. Here we go, a Redis password. Again, you can provide a default password. And let me create this variable, environment variable here. Redis password. Here it is, last step for the port. Oh, the default can be a random port, maybe, and Redis port will go here. Uh, okay. One thing you should be aware of is that uh, the Redis credential could change when Heroku reloads the underlying host where the Redis instance runs. This could be a problem, particularly in production, because uh, at this time there is no way to pass the entire Redis URL string to Django Q configuration. I saw that Django Q builds this configuration for Redis uh, in a dictionary. I don't know if this is a constraint of the Redis client, uh, but um, maybe I can take a look in the future and send a, a patch to the to the repo. Uh, anyway, if I run this cluster, you can see that it is no longer able to uh, connect to the Redis instance because the host name changed. Um, so let's stop the process. Uh, also, I need to kill it because it is hanging around. And let's get again the configuration from uh, Heroku. Uh, as you can see, the password is the same. Here we go. The password is the, the same, but the host changed. And so uh, the port for the uh, Redis instance. Let's update the configuration. I think I made another mistake because uh, here I have Redis host, instead here I uh, wrote Redis URL, so let's fix that and uh, let's update the host. Also let's update the port. Here we go. Now, if I run the cluster again with Python manager.py cluster, uh, 
uh, it should run without any problem and here it is now if you're wondering what is uh, this cluster it is the Django Cube process that communicates with Redis at this point uh, we're ready to see Django Queue in action with a couple of use cases uh, the first example I want to show you is uh, where the this sleep function oh uh, first let's confirm that we have this view hanging up for 10 seconds uh, let me open another uh, terminal again and activate the environment uh, could be useful later and I will call from the terminal the uh, Django application that is in that is running in the background uh, the view shall take 10 seconds to return something to me in fact uh, the view something uh, something is blocking the view now um, how Django queue can help in these cases imagine that in, a, in your view you want to render a pdf or making an api call uh, if the api call takes uh, too much to return uh, the user will get stuck uh, waiting for that response uh, so let's see first uh, how we can use django queue to remove this uh, uh, sleep call from the view to queue uh, a task in Django queue, we need to import the uh, async task function. Now, this function takes three arguments. The first argument is the function inside a mo the module that you want to call for this asynchronous task. The second argument is uh, mm, I mean it is uh, it could be a list of argument in reality uh, these argument are any argument that you want to pass to the the function that is in the module so for example if in a moment uh, we will create a module in demo app dot services dot uh, we will create a function named sleep and print for instance if this function takes any number of argument you need to pass the arguments in uh, uh, inside the async task function we will see in a moment so any number of argument that you want to pass inside the async task uh, the third argument is the hook it is the function that you want to run after the task runs now to illustrate the concept let's remove this call here and instead of calling directly sleep we going to call async task now as i said the first uh, argument is a module is the is a um, is the function uh, that you want to call so let's make a function in another file you can place this file here inside your application now i'm calling mine services but you call you can call it whatever you want in this file let's import the sleep function from the uh, time module and uh, let's define this uh, function named sleep and print that maybe can take the number of seconds that uh, should wait before uh, printing something so we will pass this uh, argument and while we're there let's define uh, let's call print simply uh, task run now this module is ready to be used from uh, the async task uh, let me go inside the view again uh, so uh, the first uh, argument is the name of the module with the function you want to call as the asynchronous task uh, the second argument uh, is the argument that you want to pass uh, to this function in this case script and print takes the number of seconds that we want to wait uh, before printing something that could be five for now 
and the hook uh, instead is a function that you want to run after the asynchronous task uh, is completed. So let's define another function here. It could be uh, hook after sleeping. Now, this is a contrived example. In a moment, we will see uh, how to call an API. Uh, this uh, this hook uh, uh, in Django Q takes the uh, any hook in Django Q takes the task as the parameter, and for uh, checking things out, I will uh, print the result of this task. Now let's wire up everything. Here I can pass the hook argument, which takes the module and the hook that I want to run. The hook is hook after sleeping. Here we go. So uh, let's make a quick recap. Async task is a function from Django queue that is used to queuing a task to the, uh, to the queue. It takes at least one argument that could be the module that you want to call uh, the function that you want to call in the module if the function takes any argument you can pass them here and uh, then we have this hook uh, argument too which is a function that will run uh, as soon as the task finish now this is the big picture oh, uh, let's move this import that uh, is not in need anymore uh, Again, this is the big picture. Let's see what happens now if I call my URL after uh, queuing that task. Oh, don't forget to, to reload the Django application after changing the environment variable. Uh, let me run this call. Here we go. Now, things have changed. First of all, uh, the view responds in real time. You can see here in the output of the Django uh, development server that there is this enqueued one that is the task that has been enqueued by the async, this async task function uh, so this slip and print function is not blocking anymore uh, the view and uh, here you can see a couple of things too first you can see in this log that the task has been processed in the meantime you can also see this message here task run which is coming from this sleep and print function uh, there is a, a little error here uh, return hook is malformed that is because i think i uh, made a little mistake here it, it, it the module is not service it is services let me confirm that uh, yes it is services let me fix that now let's try uh, uh, again let's try again another task let's try to enqueue that task again here we go and uh, as you can see even the hook is running as expected uh, the hook is returning none at this moment because when we call this function it does not return anything now let's think about a slightly uh, more complex example uh, let's say that you want to make an api call instead of just printing stuff in a moment we will install htpx uh, so in this case you will have a function that gets some data from a remote api and returns the uh, that data. Uh, let's install HPX in a moment. I need to stop the Django server. Uh, I can install HPX. Uh, okay, here we go. I think we're fine. Let's run again the uh, development server. Uh, HPX should be uh, ready in my in my module. Uh, so let's say we want to call uh, a URL, maybe an API. I will use um, an URL of mine here. And uh, let's say that we want to uh, get some JSON back from this 
API. Now, this is a, a call that potentially could block uh, the view because, of course, the API may respond with a, a bit of delay or could be uh, even down, you don't know. Um, oh, by the way, this should live outside because I can pass the URL as a, um, an argument here. Now let's define also an hook here that runs after this get data function is called. Uh, could be get data hook uh, again takes the tasks uh, the task as a parameter and in this case maybe we want to print uh, the result. In this case, the result will be uh, the result of this JSON call to the get method. Uh, let me grab just five. Uh, items and with this module in place we're ready to use these new functions so instead of slip and print we're going to call get data and here as the hook we're going to call get data hook uh, now worth repeating the hook is something that runs when the task succeeds uh, now you, you may need to uh, reload the, the cluster because sometimes when you when you make changes to the to the functions for the async task or to the modules uh, the cluster Django queue is not able to pick up the new version. Okay, uh, let's reload the Django development server again just for. Uh, just to be sure and let me make another call to my api uh, int object has no attribute oh because i just missed uh, the url here as the argument for the api call so uh, let's use this url of mine again here uh, now it should run fine uh, connection error. Yes, I misspelled the URL again. I missed the dot com here. I'm making uh, a lot of silly errors today. Uh, here we go. Okay, now uh, the view is running fine. Uh, the task has been enqueued. And as you can see, uh, there is this output here that is coming from the API call. Uh, so uh, this is the life cycle of uh, an asynchronous task in Django queue. Uh, the task gets enqueued and, and as soon as it gets a response, uh, you can see the output that you choose to return from the hook. Uh, this is the theory around Django queue. Now, if you're wondering how this task queue fit into a new version of Django, now that Django is going asynchronous, uh, make sure to listen to, the, as a, to this episode of uh, Django chat. As Caltron said in this episode, uh, the need for this task queue, this more robust solution for enqueuing uh, long-running tasks won't go away anytime soon, uh, even if if Django will go asynchronous. Now let's uh, uh, do a quick recap. Uh, to enqueue an asynchronous task with Django queue, uh, you need to import the async task function. Uh, this function takes at least one argument, uh, that is the name of the function inside a module that you want to run as an asynchronous task. Uh, in this case, the asynchronous task can be whatever you want. I just made an API call here. Uh, then uh, if the function takes any argument, you need to pass that argument uh, here in the asynchronous task function. And you can also run an hook after the asynchronous task has finished it, uh, if you want to return th something. Uh, at this point in this, um, in this hook, you can do whatever you want. For example, if you want to return something to the user, uh, you can play together with Django channels uh, or you can uh, save something the Django 
m you can uh, even spin up a signal only the sky is uh, is your limit here the nice thing about uh, Django Q and uh, about all this task queue is that you can just offload um, asynchronous work out of your Django view I think it's everything for now if you have any feedback any question uh, feel free to ask uh, in the comments Take care. Bye.